Honourable Member for Fifth sir. Mr. Speaker, I'll be very short. I'm not going to address the wisdom of borrowing money or that amount of money um, for roads, etc. I'd rather focus on some other issues. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I listened very carefully to the member for Castries North as he rehearsed the challenges, the issues of road construction, road repair, and so much of it is familiar. Um, we seem to be doing the same things over and over again. There have been so many efforts to develop a program for road maintenance and road repair at one time financed by the Caribbean Development Bank. Plans developed and we are back to square one. So I wish him luck and hope that he's able to accomplish what seemed to have been so difficult in the past. But that being said, I noticed in, in his presentation that he did not focus on the issue of the quality of the construction of, of, of the roads in the country. And year after year, I watch millions of dollars go down the drain because of poor construction techniques and poor construction methods. Mr. Speaker, to be frank, I am not too sure whether our engineers in the Ministry of Infrastructure are really advising on the best methods to construct roads. And I think the former Minister of Infrastructure would probably tell you that it's a discussion I've had with him um, repeatedly um, in the past. And I'm astonished that roads that have sometimes been constructed um, seemingly with the, usual, uh, with the usual methods, in no time, the roads begin to disintegrate. And I know that the member for Sozel has not been tempted to speak tonight, but his exp the experience of the Saltivas Road is a classic case in point. I traverse that road, I go up and down that road quite often, and I'm aware that over $5 million have been spent on that road. In fact, I suspect much more and it's amazing that uh, road sections were constructed within weeks and months, completely disintegrated, and the ministry had to request a potholing unit to go in and to pothole seemingly sections of the road that had been, that had been repaired. I think there is, seems to be a view that everybody can construct a road. Every contractor is capable of constructing a road. And there's no doubt in my mind that the particular contractor that was selected to carry out these repairs did an atrocious job on those roads. An absolutely atrocious job. Because within weeks or days of the work that he did, the surface of the road started to, to disin disintegrate. And I note that there are still challenges with, with that particular road and um, even more repairs are required to deal with the problems that, you have, that have been experienced on that road. The, the point resonates too because um, it's interesting to hear the member for Castries North discuss the problem between the Lakai Denry Junction up to, to Tamazo, that piece of road. And I recall many years ago that we were rushed into reconstructing that piece of road because of incessant potholes along the um, Larishus, well, not the Larishus Road, the, the section um, from Grand Riviere down to Tamazo. And the chosen contractor at the time was, in fact, C.O. Williams and company. And again, that was another atrocious piece of work because within months of C.O. Williams doing the construction on that road, it, the process of disintegrating commenced and potholes, etc. And it is for that reason that that road is in the state that it is in today. 
I spoke to several engineers regarding that issue, and one of the things they kept on saying was that there were errors in the uh, mix of materials used for the construction of the road, and including, of course, the amount, the ratio of cement to sand, etc., because there was a, uh, uh, an, uh, an overlay of, of, of cement and, and sand before the road was paved. But one would have never have thought that an experienced contractor like C.O. Williams would have produced a road of that quality. And uh, there's no question that if you look at that piece of road now, the entire piece has to be repaved and, and redone because it continues to disintegrate. I know the member for um, Denry North did not draw that to the attention in his con to the attention of the member for Castries North in his submission. But again, it goes back to that basic point that we need to rethink or look seriously at the way we are constructing roads. And I fear that the engineers in the Ministry of Infrastructure have a single mindset. They believe that roads should be constructed in a particular way. And they're not looking at the historical record to see whether the methods that they have advocated. And usually when they are contested, they tell you, well, you know, it's money, we don't have enough resources, and we cannot seal the roads, etc., which I don't think is, is the fundamental issue. Secondly, I think the issue of contractors must be tackled. It's not everybody who say they are a contractor are capable of building a proper road. And too many persons who are not experienced and qualified contractors have been given contracts to do roads, and hence the problems that you have with the quality of the roads. And as I said, the Saltipus Road is a very classic case in point. The member for, Cas for Castries North is absolutely correct that $113.4 million for road construction is really neither here nor there in terms of the, the roads that have to be tackled and in terms of the cost of roads. And I suspect the temptation is going to be to build roads that are, um, shall we say, economical, for want of a better term, meaning that not much money is going to be poured into ensuring that you have a sound foundation and a good surface. And if that is the case, then even more attention has to be paid to the choice of contractors. And it's not everybody who says, listen, I am a subscriber, a believer in the faith, the theology, really should be given contracts to build roads when they have a proven record of absolutely poor performance um, on, on the roads. The second point that I want to make very briefly, as I said, I hope the member for Castries North gets on top of the maintenance issues. And as someone who frequents the South regularly, I am exceedingly concerned about the maintenance of the View Photo Sufra Road. That surface has held up admirably given the load of traffic that it bears. <coughs> but there are parts of it that are now under severe stress, and you could see the damage, and absolutely no attention is given to the road. Or if there is attention, it's very, very sporadic. I don't think the country can afford to allow this to happen when a road that has um, attracted or attracted so much dispute, including, of course, a commission of inquiry, and we'll leave that for another show another time. But that having been said, the physical issues with the road need to, be, need to be tackled. The contractors did a magnificent job in terms of building drainage and ensuring that um, the, 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 the roads were provided with the drains that it needed to cope with runoff water. But the surface in some parts are getting under serious stress because of earth movements, etc., cetera. And um, it's, it's quite visible, especially given to the aftermath of the weather systems that we have had. So my submission is really twofold. One, attention has to be paid to construction methods. Construction methods have to be re revisited. Not all contractors are qualified to build good roads, and that has to be seriously considered. And I think what Mr. Skelly did uh, on that salty bus road is an abomination, an absolute abomination. It should never, ever, ever have happened. 
And um, finally, on the maintenance side, I think we have excellent roads that are <coughs> under stress and attention must be paid to those roads as quickly as possible to avert further deterioration. That's it, Mr. Speaker. I thank you.